Today, today, we want to share with you for the next few minutes um, just some of our trip to Africa. We're coming back from Uganda. We've been back. We traveled 42 hours straight to be home with you guys. And so we are just this morning for the first time feeling like normal people again. And so, man, we're glad that we can <laughs> share it with you. Uh, but we do have a few pictures that we want to show. Is that okay, everybody? So it's going to be like kind of show and tell this with, is like with Grandma and Grandpa. This is like when you go to Grandma's you know house and she's got the projector out and they like... Yeah, so we're, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to okay? do that. Y'all ready for it? Y'all ready for it? We're going to so keep we just, it brief. We want to share just a little bit of what we went through, what we experienced, and what we got to be a part of. And we want you to know that it wasn't just us, but mm -hmm. you were a part of that too. As um, I don't know if you know this, but we were able to provide uh, a conference for over a thousand pastors. We got a picture for that. But over a thousand pastors in Mercy City, we helped make that happen. We covered their costs of travel. We covered the cost of the conference. We we covered the cost of their lodging. We covered the cost of everything that, that we covered the cost. And so thank you so much for your generosity and being a part of that. Yeah, good. Okay, so the first day um, we got to be a part of Compassion. Uh, this is a Compassion site housed at a local church. Uh, we're going to talk more about this um, this mm -hmm. afternoon, but it was actually the um, day of the African child. And so there was all of this extra stuff that we got to see, and we spent the whole day with these kids mm -hmm. and they were amazing. It was so cute. They actually, amazing. because they had special guests coming, they considered us special guests, um, they, they put together a parade there for us. It was a parade. It was incredible. We'll, we'll, we've got we'll some video a, We'll have a little later. video it's really uh, fun. You know, later. But that was, that was day number one. And then what we did was we jumped forward to the conference that we told you about, and they did a, what they called a gatekeeper's event, where um, everything that happens in the cities, the towns, the villages in Africa goes through a gatekeeper or like, um, um, like the, the mayor or somebody who is, you know, kind of not, not that officially in charge, but well, bas these, basically has influence. Yeah, these were pastors who are leading churches over 500. And that's where I was going to go. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's, that's what We've we're doing a, here. We, we don't, that's that's no, what we're doing here. We I both thought, like to talk. I thought, we talked, I thought we talked that I would have this right. point and you well, would you have the next Well, you weren't getting there, point. so I was going to just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah. Teamwork. Okay. We got it. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, these were churches, everybody, <laughs> as you know already, that uh, had 500 or more within their community. And so we got to spend two days, in fact, pouring into them, and uh, it was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. So this is a picture from the front of the conference. They had planned on, so they have a network which is how Next Level Network, which we're a part of, we got connected with there. It's called um, Pastors Discipleship Network. It's actually a network of over 15,000 15, mm -hmm. pastors and leaders. And so they were, we provided through Next Level this conference that we could support 1,000 pastors. So it was, And that's what you sewed into. That's what you sewed into. It was like 500 couples. So it was um, But both, tell, them, tell them what happened. That's what I was getting there. Oh, so, so, so it's not just no. me dragging on these points. So we get. <laughs> okay. Y'all see get, how it is? I'm glad I have my own mic. That's, That's why we I don't preach today. together very um, often, everybody. So we get there, and um, Pastor Richmond, who you're going to meet in a few minutes, but he's like, okay, I had some people upset um, because we could only bring 1,000 pastors. So he said, so I hope you're not mad, but I actually said that we would do this again next year. And we were like, Okay, all right. He's like, surprise. Uh, surprise. Uh, but it was really cool. So the day, this day, Pastor Richmond shared with us that um, an extra, about 210 pastors, they just showed up. So we were actually about 1,210 pastors and leaders who were in this. It was a big tent. So we had our first tent meeting. It was Oh, awesome. it was a tent revival, baby. It was baby. hot. <laughs> Jesus. It was hot. Uh, it and was so awesome. what we were able to do is actually... Um, we were able to each teach breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. So Pastor Matt and I were able to teach about 400 pastors over those two days about building. Uh, they specifically asked us to talk about building teams because building that's, teams that's one of our strengths and staff culture. is uh, building that culture. So that was that. And then this is the freedom experience that we led the pastors through freedom, which you guys know if you've been here for very long. Um, we were able to do freedom. It was awesome. It was it awesome. It was awesome, So man. we prayed for you. all these people we got to pray for and be a part of um, everything that they were doing. It, it was just, it was really powerful the, the whole time. We had 14 of us and then 35 
prayer team from their ministry yeah. were able to pray. And we prayed for probably an hour and a half just praying it for people. It was awesome. Just, it was awesome. It was sweaty. And, you know, they didn't have any AC in that tent, stinky. everybody. Um, it was and, stinky. And, uh, yeah, it did stink. Woo, Jesus. Uh, we, we, I mean, we, you didn't stink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next slide. <laughs> so, so one of the things, one of the highlights for me was Pastor Richmond walking us around the property at Pastor Discipleship Network, which is an incredible story. Mm-hmm. But he was, he was telling us about it. In fact, the, the pastors that they have, again, they have about 15,000 churches that they oversee currently and are helping equip. But he said more than 75% of these pastors don't have uh, the equivalent of, you know, like middle school beyond education. And so the fact of them responding to a call but having no formal training was really in his heart to begin. And so what they're doing is they're building a Bible college, and they found this land that nobody else wanted, and they decided to buy it, okay? And just a complete miracle of God on how they bought it. But he took us to this tree, and this tree, I cannot pronounce the name of it, so I'm not even going to try. But specifically, this tree, culturally for them... um, it, it symbolizes a curse that is on the land, okay? And so culturally, if you're going to build on this land, you would remove this tree, but you would also make a sacrifice, the sacrifice of an animal, a sacrifice of something, you know, along those lines. And he told us specifically because of the size of their building project, culturally, they would make a child sacrifice, which obviously they're not going to do because they're believers. But I love what he did. He said, you know what, and if you were able to look really closely, you can see on the sides of these trees where witch doctors have literally um, cast spells and made curses, but then what they do is they nail it or attach it to the tree so that the curse will stand. And he said, you know what, we're going to leave it to show the community the power of Jesus Christ and the power of the gospel. And that fired me up, man, because... Because it's like, it's like, tell me it can't happen. Tell me it can't happen. Let me show you the power of my God, man. And this, is, this was my walk away. This was my favorite part. I was like, yeah, we're about to leave some trees up in Lincoln and in Seward. We're about to do this and show the culture the truth of God's word yeah. and that we're not backing down, but that God can do significant and powerful things. The fact that some of y'all are here and you're worshiping God, the way that you're worshiping God is a cultural miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Because people said it can't happen and can't do it, but God said yeah. otherwise, and that was, that was my favorite. So yeah. this tree is my favorite part of the trip. So my favorite part, um, we had an opportunity to do a sisterhood breakout, and so this was one of two rooms that we were able to be in, and this is at the end of the breakout, but if you had walked in there at the beginning of the breakout, it was a very different atmosphere. The women were very um, cold They were very isolated. Um, Something that they told us is they've never seen a husband and wife teach together. In their culture, that's all we took. And that's all we took was couples. Yeah. And Pastor Matt and Pastor Sarah preached together on the main stage. We all did our breakouts together. And they were like, the marriages there are very transactional. And so us going in there in that way was like, they didn't really know how to receive us. So we went in and we were kind of like, they were kind of like heckling us a little bit. The women were. And we were like, okay, we've got to be prepared for this. So we were praying, leading into it. And we brought, um, I think we brought 600 sisterhood necklaces. If you were at sisterhood this year, you got a sisterhood necklace. But we thought, let's bring them all a gift. And so we brought these necklaces. And I tell you what, if the atmosphere in the room didn't shift, these women were so overwhelmed that they received a gift. They were all taking them out of their packages and putting them on like immediately. They were, we couldn't get them to be quiet. They were smiling all of a sudden. They were like, you would have thought we just gave them a million dollars. And then we had them stand together and link arms because we were talking about being a part of a sisterhood. And they began to pray for each other. And we have a, I have a video, I'll post it on my, on my Instagram, but we have a video and it's loud, them just praying for one another, coming together and believing for one another in unity. I mean, from, it was an hour session and I, it, it was like a totally different 
room of women. It was amazing. So that was my favorite part, um, just to see that little act of kindness and generosity, yeah. how it completely changed the atmosphere of the room, and I really truly believe of their hearts. So yeah. it was awesome. And last but certainly not least, I guess when you're in Africa, you have to do a safari. So <laughs> we, uh, and they felt the same. They wanted, to, they wanted to gift us a safari for the way that we went and poured out. We preached and we taught and different things like this. And so uh, they actually have um, one, of the, one of the guys on their staff is a safari guide. And so he took us, um, you know, it was actually a seven-hour trip. Uh, in <laughs> and they called the roads the African massage. Yeah, because they which were I don't so know if you bumpy. guys have ever been. I, we had never been to Africa. The the roads are yeah, very cool. similar to driving through Lincoln, especially on 84. <laughs> um, but it's like it's like except you up. go 100. So yeah. they were going it's, fast. It's straight up, uh, you know, every stretch of the road yeah. is is, is that everybody. And they just pass. And so it doesn't anyway, matter if there's a car coming. Just we, pass. We uh, got to go there. Uh, we received a knock on the door at our safari hut on the last morning there, and the, the guy says, hey, have you seen an elephant? And Carrie says, uh, like, yeah, yesterday yeah, on yesterday? the safari. And he said, no, 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 on the property. She's like, did you lose your elephant? Like, I mean, I, I don't have him in here. He's not in um, here. He says, no, he's on the property right out front. <laughs> so this is right outside our front door. And then, of course, we saw, uh, we were on the Nile River, river and um, we saw a couple hundred hippos. Uh, I got a they great video I'll huge. post on, uh, on my social media for that. But, um, and this is Murchison Falls, which is one of the most powerful uh, by force waterfalls in the world, man. And, awesome. and so just absolutely incredible. A great picture of us here overlooking the Nile River at sunset. And man, what an experience it was. But here's the reality of this and why we're sharing this, because we believe that it's our responsibility not just to show you pictures, but really begin to introduce you to opportunities to have very similar journey as God calls you or uh, leads you into it. And so one of the things that we really did and, and, and took inventory of while we were away was, okay, this is what God has done in us over the last 10 years as we're moving forward. So what does the next decade look like for Mercy City Church? Okay, what does it look like for you? What does it look like for us? What does it look like for Seward? What does it look like now for Mercy City at City Impact? What does it look like for our future locations? What does it look like for uh, the young people that we're raising up that are going to be leading future locations for us? What does that look like? And so God really began to burst some dreams in our heart. And so that's what we want to talk to you about today. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm going to preach a message. We're going to preach a message called Be My Witnesses. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We're so grateful for the wonderful opportunity we have today to be in your presence. We don't take it lightly, God. It's a big deal. And so we pray today that by the power of your spirit, you would lead us and guide us, that you would show us Jesus in a more real, clear, and powerful way than we've ever seen him before. Because we know it's upon revelation of who Jesus is that you build and establish a church. So we say build it, establish it, do it in and through us in a way that only you can. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on one more time, everybody. A hand clap for Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. So, as I said, what does it look like as we move forward? Acts chapter number one, I want to share this portion of scripture. Verse number eight says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. You'll be, uh-oh. You'll be my witnesses. Let's see if this will work. No. We're struggling today, everybody. It's okay. You. Let me say you. You. Say me. You will be my witnesses. Whose witnesses? Witnesses of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Telling people everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let me say ends of the earth. Ends of the earth. Ends of the earth. How many of y'all know that the end of the earth is not the city line or county line here in Lincoln or Lancaster or Seward? That's not the ends of the earth. Right. I'm going to go into more detail of what exactly that looks like even next week as we continue this mini-series, Be My Witnesses, um, 
moving forward. But I want us to get this understanding that we, those of us who are in Christ, those of us who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are called to be his witnesses. Somebody say me. Me. I'm called to be his witness everywhere I go. So in light of this scripture and on the heels of, you know, the opportunity that we just experienced last week, like I said, we left and we had some feelings rolling around in our hearts that first day. We had this compassion encounter where we went to this church and we saw these 300 young people that were learning about Jesus, that we, uh, we saw them being fed, we saw them being taught, we saw them being clothed. We saw what compassion was accomplishing there at this site and we thought, oh my gosh, even for me, I grew up among the poorest of the poor in the United States. And even for me, I thought, wow, I'm feeling guilty. And so we began to have this wrestling match that was taking place on the inside of us. And I was like, okay, am I feeling guilty? Am I feeling convicted? Am I feeling, what am, what am I feeling? I'm feeling like I could probably do more. I'm feeling like maybe I should do more. I'm feeling like maybe I've let my eyes be fixed too much on me. And we began to wrestle. But the bottom line is this. Those of us who are in Christ, we are not guilty. The Bible tells us there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. However, while we're not guilty, there is a sense of responsibility that we need to step up and take. And so that's what I want to talk to you about for a minute is I don't want us to look at these videos. I don't want us to look at these pictures. I don't want us to hear these stories. And I, want us, I don't want us to feel guilty. I want us to begin to ask the Lord, okay, what is my responsibility? Because for all of us, it's going to be different what our responsibility is. There's a responsibility that we have to take, and it's not a guilt. It's a sense of conviction that we lean into by the power of the Holy Spirit. One thing that Pastor Matt Keller said to us at dinner, because somebody was talking about how they felt guilty, he said, guys, 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 we can't feel guilty, but we do need to know that with The lottery win that we had, the birth lottery, we were born into the wealthiest country in the world. Mm -hmm. We were born into a place with all the opportunity at our fingertips where somebody who comes from nothing could make something out of their lives. With that comes a sense of responsibility. So what is our responsibility? We've got to view it through this lens. I, who am in Christ, can be a witness But what's my responsibility? So we kind of looked at this as a leveling up for us personally. Like there's a maturity that has to happen. Because our responsibility when we were 18 or 19 was more limited in what we could do. But we realize now that as we're older, as we have more resources, as we're leading a church, as we are leading a church, we have an opportunity to do something with the responsibility that we have. And so our new mature view will stir this sense of responsibility and will lead us to an opportunity. And we really believe that this conviction that we're feeling should lead us to a new opportunity. So I want us to think about investing in the lives of others and making an investment. This verse here in Matthew 25, 40, it talks about the, when we do something for the least of these, we do it unto him. And there was nothing more prevalent to us that we were ministering to the least of these. But we can't get our eyes limited on just that um, international view or that global view, but we have to do both and, right? It's at home and it's there. It's the least of these here in Lincoln, people who can't do anything for us, people who have no opportunity. You know, we, we think we have an opportunity to invest of the lives of people. A lot of times what we do is we look for people who can do something for us. Right, well, I'm going to make this investment because if I invest in this person, then they can do something for me That's and benefit me. That's why Serve me. Day is so beautiful for all of us to be a part of. Yeah. And why we don't want you to overlook it as it comes through year after year after year after year. Yeah. We saw this. Some of our old timers didn't get connected yesterday, and we're wondering, okay, well, we always do Serve Day. We're always a part of it. We're always. 
No, no, no. It's an opportunity for us to lay ourselves aside and say, you know what? We're not looking for anything in return. This is an opportunity for us to serve into the community and be a part of something that's greater. And we were really challenged just how we're sowing into the next generation, next gen ministry, how we're investing in kids, how we're investing in teenagers, and knowing that the Bible talks about, I'm not going to read this for time's sake, but that one plants, one waters, and one brings the increase, okay? And one of the most amazing things we got to see while we were at the compassion this is site, awesome. Is this we got is to see both awesome. the seed sown and the fruit of that seed that was sown. So we got to see these kids who we have an opportunity to sponsor, who we have an opportunity to invest in their lives. But all throughout the week, we met adults who were compassion kids. We met pastors, we met leaders, our safari driver, his wife, our host, his wife, our interpreter, his wife, our our host and his wife were actually sponsored by the same family, and the woman was praying for them over and over that they would stay connected. They ended up getting married, named their daughter after their compassion sponsor. Pearl, isn't that so sweet? We just saw these over and over and over again. We saw the investment that we could make in, in these kids. And then the people, the, the way that they um, take advantage of the sponsorship and the way that that can impact their life. And so we want to tell you guys more about Compassion, but we have a video that we're actually going to show, and it, it highlights one of these adults. It was actually Pastor Richmond who hosted the conference. He hosted it highlights the conference. his story as a Compassion kid. Is And he's the overseer of these 15,000 churches. And his church is the church that I got to minister in on Sunday morning when we were there. So uh, let's take a look at this video. Y'all meet Pastor Richmond. When I was eight years old, my father was taken away from us. And by that, I mean he was murdered. Nothing was the same for me. News began to come to our doorstep. From our landlord, we got word that we couldn't stay in the house that we stayed anymore because we couldn't afford it. My mother had no job. My father was the only breadwinner. We moved from where we stayed to a place called Naguru Kasenke, which is one of Uganda's largest slums. And then I was introduced to our new home, which was a 12 by 12 room. I looked up on the roof, it was a tin roof that had holes in it. I've been to places where when it rains, people are happy, they get excited. But for me growing up, whenever it rained, that was a night that we would stay standing. Get little buckets, place just where the holes in the roof are, and wait until morning. A reality hit me that day, this was life. I remember when my mom said to us, there was no money for food. That ushered us into a place where we were now going to begin to go to the street to fend for food. Hunger began to set in, lack of water. I was a kid, I I didn't have time to be a child anymore. As I lived like this on a daily basis, Poverty began to speak to me as a child. I felt I was nothing. I didn't matter. Nobody cared to know my name. I think the best way I could describe who I was and what I thought is the word hopeless. My mother, in tears, uh, approached one of her friends just to share with her friend and her friend shared with her about compassion compassion staff members immediately came to our home Uh, i remember them coming with uh just uh, files to 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 get details of who we were what our story was i got the news that a young lady heather she was 15 years old a teenager she had decided to sponsor me i cannot find the words to describe the joy that filled our home when we got the news. Richmond, you've got a sponsor, which means you can now go back to school. It means food will be given to us because of you. I began to walk into that reality that ushered in me an opportunity 
to rekindle this hope that was taken away. Heather began to write to me. To hear words like, Richmond, I love you. Richmond, I'm praying for you. They began to bring healing into places that were destroyed by voices and poverty and my self-image. I remember my day, June the 3rd, 1996. I walked forward to accept the Lord Jesus in my heart. I began to feel, wow, I have been released from poverty. I have been released. God began to continue to grow the leadership within me. And then I felt fully called to pursue pastoral ministry. I began the Pastors Discipleship Network, a ministry that exists to train and equip pastors. And I spend a lot of my life training and equipping pastors in the Word of God. Looking back, into my life and thinking where I am right now and what I'm doing, I don't think any of this would have been possible without compassion. Compassion works. Everything that was placed within the program has helped build me to who I am right now. Poverty is not just the lack of money, the lack of material, food and water. Poverty is in, it's deep. I credit a lot of how I feel now about myself to those letters that I received from my sponsor. My name is Richmond Wandera, and I was released from poverty in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. That's good news, isn't it? That is good news. So one of the things that Pastor Richmond said continually to us as we were there, he said that if we can impact the life of one pastor, we can change the world. And that's his vision. That's his vision for the network. But what stirred in me after seeing both extremes was what if that pastor is a six-year-old boy waiting for a sponsor? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's my turn still. What if, what, if it's, what if that pastor's wife is a three-year-old little girl? And we've got to be honest with you. And we, we want to publicly repent because we've been so consumed with what God is doing in Lincoln that we've overlooked what God's doing in the world. And we have not led you as well as we should have led you or could have led you. Our view has been small mm -hmm. and it's been close. And we want you to know that that's not going to be the case anymore. We're going to stay very much focused at home. And we're going to move forward and advance the kingdom of heaven in Nebraska and beyond as we're called. But there's going to be a new international view as well. And it's going to focus on all of God's people and all of God's children because there is a maturity that's come to our house. And with that maturity, a sense of responsibility. Uh, so we're going to show, I think that's too Let's much. Let's just forget about okay, it. Okay, we want to show you guys. We got, <laughs> We've got one more video so to show you. We had to ask ourselves, what's our responsibility? And we, Because we believe that we have to lead the way. We found out when we were at the Compassion site, and they're all housed through local churches. And that's one thing that we love so much, is you cannot sponsor a Compassion child unless they are a part of a local church. So they get them um, brought into these churches. Where they go every Saturday. They call them projects. They call them projects. So the project that we were at had, I think, 57 kiddos that weren't sponsored. So among our group, we took 12. And so... Pastor Matt and I took, we felt led to take four kids, um, and the coolest thing was the first one, we got to meet him. Um, he's a 20-year-old who was sponsored, but their sponsor had to stop for some reason, so for the last two years of his sponsorship, we get to sponsor him, we got to meet him, we got to go to his home and meet his mom, and so we want to show you guys a video of our experience. Yes. Yeah. We're here at the first compassion site, which is so exciting.
for these people who have come to visit at, in, uh, at our home and I want to share with you the dream that I, that I have at heart. So a little bit I asked Misesh on the way over he is finishing high school mm. correct do you want to tell us you're finishing high school and then you're on to yeah, I'm finishing high school this year mm. and I'm and I'm, I now have a dream of joining university. Yeah. He, he wants to go into aviation. Wow. So he's never been on a plane, mm -hmm. but has plans to work at the airport, yes. correct? Yes. While attending classes. Yeah. I think I'll first work at the airport, mm -hmm. and later I'll, I'll pursue that dream of becoming an, an a pilot. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. also, he also told me, that you have been a part of the church that we've spent the day at yes. for how long? Uh, for 17 years because I joined uh, that project when I was three years. Wow. Um, so three years. At this moment, I'm 20. He and his mother uh, uh, both gave their lives to Jesus yeah. there, right? Wow. Is yes, that correct? Church, yeah, yes. Every Sunday, also my, my mom attends church. Yeah. Yes. So yes. they're mm -hmm. both a part of the church because of the connection through the project. Wow. So, with you guys, we're so excited about mm -hmm. Misesh. The opportunity to meet him and his mother, come to their home mm -hmm. uh, and visit today. And the reality is we've had the opportunity to partner with them as he continues to make next, next steps, continuing uh, to finish up high school and then on to university. Again, he wants to be a pilot. And so Mercy City Church, we're coming alongside him and we're gonna help by the grace of God, see that happen. Thank you. Come on, everybody, tell the people of Mercy City, Jesus! Jesus! Come on, everybody. So we just want to share with you kind of our action steps now moving forward. Obviously, um, you're going to have an opportunity to sponsor a child today. We got the names of three of our sponsored kids, or four, with, with Misich. We, we got to meet them, but when we got home, we actually got our packet for our girls. We've got three little girls. And um, while we were there, I saw this cute little girl, and she, she just looked like, you know what, I own this place. And so I, was, I took a couple pictures of her because I was like, I'm going to take this child and bring it back home with me. She's so cute. Not really. I wasn't going to steal anybody. I wouldn't, um, let, I wouldn't let her do that. But we were looking at our, one of our children, and I realized that was the little girl. Well. There she is. So this is one of our kids. Her name's Gift. Gift. And we're able to sponsor her. Um, and what that looks like is you, it's $43 a month, and it provides all their school fees and food, and you can pay an extra $7 a month to cover some more of their medical costs. So total, if you choose, is $50 a month per child. Um, the coolest thing is the intentionality of compassion. They go into their homes. We have opportunity. We could see her medical records. We can see everything that's going on with them. Um, they're very organized. 2.3 million kids are sponsored through Compassion, and they and know And all who of they them are. connected to a local church. All of them are connected to the local church. And so it was really cool to see. Um, they have an app that you write letters through now. You send pictures through now. Um, and the, the thing that we love, too, is um, you can send them birthday gifts. You can send them Christmas gifts. You can send a family gift. And they'll go into their home, and they'll see what the need is. 
and then the compassion team will go and buy whatever they need. So Pastor Sarah was telling us she was in one of the homes of their kids that they sponsor, and the mom was saying, thank you for the table, thank you for the table. And she was like, I don't know what she's talking about. But it turned out they were eating on the floor, and the compassion team went in and saw that they could use a kitchen table. So with the family gift they sent for Christmas, they provided them with a kitchen table um, from their sponsors. And so it's just so intentional and we loved seeing how they do everything uh, for the families. So what we did was there were those 57 opportunities at the project we were at. And we thought, well, we're doing Compassion Sunday when we get back. How cool would it be if we got packets from that site? site? And so uh, not only did they give us those packets, but they gave us several more of children in different sites that are within 25 miles of that specific site. So if we were to ever want to go on a trip together, say as a church, and meet the children that God's leading us to sponsor, we could be a part of that, and so could our kids. Again, this is not for us to feel guilty, but it's just to ask the Lord, what's our responsibility in this? And so we're going to pray to close. And we would love for you just to consider, Lord, what's my responsibility in this? Mm -hmm. Is it to pray about it? Is it to sponsor a child? To sponsor two? Maybe mine are gone out of the house now. And some of us sponsor four, like what we chose to do. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're a teenager and you're believing for God to do something significant in you. Just like the 15-year-old Heather that sponsored young Richmond Wandera who is now literally changing the continent of Africa. Thank you so much for watching this week's message. Our vision at Mercy City is to connect people to the heart of God and to the house of God, and that includes you. We have some amazing next steps that we wanna walk you through to discover all that God has for your life. Visit our website, mercycity.church, and click on Next Steps under the Connect dropdown. If you'd like to receive prayer, please email us at pastors at mercycity.church. We love you and can't wait to see you in person next week.